Yes, so hello, uh, good day. My name is Sandra Diaz. Um, I have the pleasure today to give you a quick tour through the simulation tools and services in eRings together with Professor Michele Migliore. Um, I'm going to start uh, going through a very quick overview of all the different tools. Well, not all of them. Unfortunately, we have quite a large list of tools. So uh, we have uh, chosen a, a set uh, of the tools which are more ready uh, to be worked with and shared um, for your purposes, also for the education purposes. Um, but um, after my presentation, that's going to be like uh, about half an hour, uh, Professor Miliari will um, then show you in a more interactive manner how to navigate the eBrains infrastructure and uh, how to find the different tools and which things are already uh, available, which things are coming up. So um, yeah, let's get started. Um, so the first thing that I want to um, let you know is, uh, of course, the simulation tools in eBrains are a large assembly of uh, software tools that uh, address different scientific questions at many different uh, temporal and spatial scales uh, of brain research. And this is very important to have in mind because we will go uh, through the different tools that are currently offered, um, let's say in a scale order. So we'll go from the nano scale to the whole brain scale uh, in the next slides. And um, of course, uh, the idea is that uh, scientists can use specific tools to address specific questions, but that also eBrains provides ways to make these tools work together uh, to answer even more complex questions uh, in the future. So this is a platform that of course will continue to grow as, as Jan already mentioned before, um, there's uh, the future of eBrains uh, is there as a platform and, and there's lots of um, things in the future expected like from the user's uh, perspective in using the tools in a combined manner to to address more complex questions. Um, the other thing that I have, of course, to say up front is I am not an expert on all these tools. Uh, I am part of the, of the tasks that develop the simulation tools at, at the whole brain simulation. Uh, but of course, this is the work of many groups within the Human Brain Project. And um, I will be very happy to try to answer some of your questions or to guide you to the right person uh, that, uh, that might have an answer for you. But of course, we can always uh, keep in touch uh, offline and try to find the right way to get the information that you need uh, for, for your um, use case, for your experience, for your specific research group. Um, then uh, let's uh, get started with simulation tools. And at the very end, I'm going to just highlight a few other tools in eBrains, in the eBrains infrastructure that have more to do with um, analysis, visualization, um, embodiment, um, emulation, uh, that are also important uh, because they uh, support uh, any of your, uh, of your research efforts within eBrains. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's get started with the subcellular scale um, for which uh, in eRains we have um, different workflows that allow these um, biomolecular simulations, uh, which can be then attached to, for example, uh, software tools like Bromax uh, for, for molecular dynamics uh, in collaboration with um, different um, computing infrastructure, for example, high performance computing infrastructure that gives you the extra power to do large simulations of, of complex uh, dynamics integrated into Jupyter notebooks and easy to use scripts that can then produce uh, data that can be analyzed or further used in multi-scale simulations, for example, for um, um, network models. 
Um, so in the, um, in the current state, there are different workflows, for example, workflows to analyze experimental molecular data, workflows to predict how the molecular structures in, in, in neuronal biomolecules uh, look like, and tools for exploiting molecular information in simulations uh, of, of neurons and networks of neurons. Uh, and as I said, these are very use case specific workflows that uh, can, be, uh, can be also supported by Jupyter Notebooks, which are deployed in the collaboratory of the human brain project, of the eBrains infrastructure of the human brain project, and um, which are also supported by specific web service and databases, which contain an, uh, data and interact with these uh, workflows in order to provide you um, the right tools to um, do your simulations and then extract data that you can further use in, in a later step. Um, there, here I'm showing just a few uh, examples of what was available in the collaboratory one during the previous phase of the human brain project, the uh, RCA2, and uh, are, they are currently being ported to the collaboratory two, which is the current version uh, of the collab. And at that point, they will be um, readily available for the community in general. Of course, um, these are very complex simulations, which have a variety of parameters that can be set up based on experimental data, uh, but also um, with some statistical parameters that you want to achieve with your models. So there are also what they call model fitting tool chains, which allow you to integrate both data with models um, with some fitness measures uh, in order to obtain models which more uh, which are more um, suitable uh, for simulation and which fit better the behavior that you would expect from your simulate from your experiment in your experimental data from your simulated data um, of course the hope uh, here as Jan mentioned is to always uh, use all these arrows here try to um, base them on standards that are used both by neuroscience and systems biology uh, communities so that the interaction of data between all these modules is easy to do. And again, um, the, the, the idea is that you can take the output of these tool chains and then use some of this information to uh, move further in your simulation environment, for, for example, using steps or neuron or other uh, simulators that are available in eBrains. Um, the subcellular simulation setup application is also another example where you have a whole workflow that integrates reaction networks with some models based on a specific interaction rules. And then you can apply this to a spatial volume in, a, for example, a, a dendrite or a spine, and then do simulations of reaction diffusion using steps in order to see how um, this uh, subcellular level uh, dynamics take place in an integrated structure in neurons. And all these steps, uh, of course, are supported then by a dedicated service um, that allows you to, um, I, to select your model, to get your data and do your simulations on computing resources and then get uh, your results. When you have uh, then done your simulations at this step, you can as well integrate them uh, into some optimized uh, model using, for example, tools like BluePyOpt, and uh, which is um, a popular tool to be used together with Neuron, for example. And then you can create more complex models, for example, with the uh, Snuda tool which can allow you to create large scale networks from these basic, very detailed cell models and going all the way to simulated uh, networks, for example, here um, of the uh, striatal neurons and, um, and cover the whole 
the whole range from the single definition of a very detailed, morph morphologically detailed neuron to the network space. And that um, leads us to um, the next tool, which is also a part of our infrastructure and is developed as, uh, at NMBU, uh, which is the LFPI kit, which um, is a simulation tool that allows you to simulate local field potentials. And it is um, simulator independent. And that means that you can do these uh, calculations in space and uh, calculate, for example, extracellular potentials uh, or current dipole moments um, and um, emulate uh, EEG data, MEG data, and then you can integrate that with other simulation tools at the next scale. So at the, at the cellular scale, that means, um, for example, with neuron or with arbor, uh, and maybe uh, all the way up uh, towards NEST and even to the virtual brain, which we will see in the next uh, slides. Um, there are different tools together with the LFPI kit. This is a whole set of um, different um, tools that allow you to, to do the different um, parts of the simulation of the local field potentials. Um, for example, the LFPI part uh, already uses neuron underneath in order to, to represent cells and synapses and the structure of the neuron and then um, you can do measurements uh, using this LFPI kit on, on the local field potential generated uh, around the neuron. And there are also other tools like hybrid LFPI, um, which um, yeah, go on top of this LFPI kit. And I leave you here the contacts of the of the group as well um, that uh, that are developing the tool. So um, you can also contact them if you are interested in this. So moving forward with the cellular scale, there's also other tools like, for example, the neuro features tract, um, which is um, um, a very user friendly application where you can get uh, some electrophysiological features from simulated data, for example, or from experimental data regarding single cells. And you can also use, for example, the HH Neuron Builder uh, to create, uh, to have the, a whole workflow to build and simulate uh, single cells based on experimental data and very exact, following very exact morphologies. You can also use the small circuit in silico experiments to then have not only a single very detailed neuron, but a very small groups of these very detailed neurons and see how they collaborate with, between them. They, they transfer information between them, how the, 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 this small network interacts and you can move then one step forward into the uh, simulation. I'm oh, sorry. Um, then uh, we have the brain area simulation tools, which then take you again one step forward, and then you have full regions of the brain where you can, which you can then model based on a specific um, detailed neurons that have been built on the previous steps, for example, and then you can launch the simulation jobs because of the high demand of computational power uh, that these uh, simulations entail, you can launch these jobs on supercomputers and uh, check the results with um, available analysis uh, plots and tools and visualizations. Another tool that uh, is available at the cellular scale is Arbor which is a library uh, which supports the simulation of, again, multi-compartment um, detailed uh, structure uh, neuron models uh, on high performance uh, portable uh, infrastructure, which is um, important when you want to go um, yeah, beyond the limits of uh, the detail of neurons and also of the number of neurons that you want to have in your network. 
um, Arbor has been developed within the Human Brain Project to uh, also make uh, good use of the underlying hardware infrastructure, for example, um, make the best use of CPUs and GPUs, and uh, also going forward to uh, other future hardware infrastructures um, that can become available for scientists. Um, and uh, the, the work developed at CSCS um, is, of course, uh, also open source, as most of the tools in, in the Human Brain Project, you can not only access the code, but you can see within the development process and also get uh, into the community, into the development community. If you want, you can contribute, you can ask, you can um, report issues, of course, uh, in the spirit of what the Human Brain Project has been uh, providing uh, to, to uh, through, through the whole time, and which is the, the main aim of eBrains to, to be an, an, an open infrastructure that uh, extends and that invites the community to integrate and collaborate. Now I'm moving to the next scale. <laughs> I hope you are not already a little bit um, uh, dizzy. <laughs> it is a, um, a very fast uh, overview of all the tools. Um, but well, uh, later uh, when I'm finished, uh, Michele will uh, have the time to to land a little bit these ideas a little bit further with with some interaction on on the on the actual services. So. Um, hang in there, we're almost um, halfway through the, um, the path. So um, now we go into the network scale. Um, and here, uh, the simulator that um, we have uh, in the eBrains infrastructure is NEST, which is a simulator of the spiking neural networks. So here, um, the neurons are not uh, any more detailed neurons, but they have been abstracted to points in space. Uh, which have a specific dynamics. And um, NEST is a very flexible tool that can be used from your laptops to supercomputers. And it can be used to simulate from one neuron to millions, hundreds of millions of neurons uh, on high performance computing. And uh, NEST includes um, plasticity rules. It includes um, different types of synapses, different types of neural models. And um, it has a, a wide variety of choices for the, for the users. It has also a very strong user community to which, of course, you can also join. And it has been designed to be as fast and memory efficient as possible so that you can make best use of your hardware. Um, it is very easy to install and is of course open source and uh, um, easy to follow on GitHub as well. Um, there are very interesting use cases, of course, around all these tools. Um, here I give you a quick example of what you can do, for example, with Nest, uh, which is um, some a, a large model of uh, the, the visual related areas of the macaque cortex, which has been built with uh, sub models of uh, also a very popular model, the cortical microcircuit model for points and Diesman. And um, this uh, integrated, uh, very complex model um, is interesting because you can observe certain dynamics that you can also observe in experimental data. And of course you can do the relationship between what you see in this, uh, in this behavior and what you see in the experiments and do some further analysis and tailor it to your research question. And of course, our hope with eBrains is not only that uh, users can, um, of course, make use of what is currently available, but that you can also bring your own ideas, your own science into play. And in order to provide a the best strength possible to the users, uh, we need to give the users the ability also to express new models, to express uh, the parameters of their simulations, to express uh, their scientific question in a good way. And um, looking in this direction, there are several domain specific uh, modeling languages being developed within eBrains. One of them is NestML, uh, which is 
of course, very linked to Nest. Uh, and it allows you to very easily, in a high level language, define um, the dynamics of uh, the neural models that you want to have simulated in Nest. And this, of course, then helps the users uh, have their own ideas into the simulations without having to code uh, in C or C++ or in CUDA or in whatever uh, is about Python, what's the platform that you, uh, that you are interacting with. So in the case of Nest, you don't need to, to, to write C code in order to have your model integrated into Nest. And uh, NestML also produces code for Spinnaker, which is one of our neuromorphic hardware platforms, uh, which also makes it very good because then you can compare between um, what you have uh, simulated in Spinnaker and how do you have simulated with a Nest on, on your supercomputer, for example, on your laptop. And uh, to um, make even easier the interaction. There are also other tools like Nest Desktop, which allows you to um, easily communicate with Nest and set up uh, simple models. And I think you will hear more about this tomorrow on a hands-on session. So now I've reached the whole brain scale and, um, and at this level of, um, abstraction, uh, we have as a simulator the virtual brain. The virtual brain is a framework for simulating uh, brain dynamics um, at the course level in which the whole brain is divided in regions according to specific parcellation, which usually ranges between 60 and 1000 uh, regions of the brain. And then each region is modeled by a neural mass model or a mean field model. And um, this gives you a direct, uh, a direct link between simulation and uh, measurements that you can do from, uh, in experiments, for example, using uh, fMRI, MRI, MEG, EEG. So this becomes a very interesting tool going to the clinical uh, neuroscience, going to the medical uh, realm, because it allows you to create and formulate questions um, that are easy to compare and measure to actual um, data, um, in, a, in a patient data or consolidated patient data. And um, of course, um, this is a, a complicated uh, process. Uh, that uh, Jan also mentioned before and uh, hinted at the fact that, of course, handling uh, subject data is complicated, but mm, the idea is that eBrains um, will provide, uh, a, to a certain extent, a, a means to uh, integrate data into the simulation workflows. And then you can have something like, uh, here an example of using the TDB for um, uh, the epileptic uh, research. Uh, where here you have um, uh, a simulation that is based on experimental data, so then the structure specific patient, and then using bias in inference, you are able to determine which areas of the brain are involved in epileptic seizures, and this information can be then provided to neurosurgeons in order to enhance, hopefully, the results of um, surgical uh, procedures uh, to reduce the effects of epilepsy. Um, of course, um, you want to have um, not only very uh, fast simulations of at this level, but also you now come again to the problem of optimizing your models to a specific patient data or specific experimental data. So we have, again, another um, domain-specific language here called RateML, which allows users not only to define models in the virtual brain, but also to define the way they want to explore parameters within these models. And uh, in order to do that, you can produce either Python or CUDA code that you can run on GPUs to make a super fast parallelized exploration of the parameters uh, for your model simulation. 
And um, as I said before, um, the virtual ring is uh, also, as many of, of the other tools that I mentioned before, um, an, an element within the eBrains ecosystem. So it is able to receive data, for example, from the Human Brain Atlas, and then to, um, to create simulations on high performance computing, then give you an answer which can go through scientific validation. And then you can go back to redefinitions of your models. And um, as uh, Jan also mentioned before, the, there is a layer underneath of all the services provided by eBrains, which allows you to get um, a, a new um, a step forward into the just normal usage of the software. It gives you the boost of having uh, tools that are can be monitored, that can be assured for uh, quality, that uh, provide reproducible results that are easy to use and that they have been checked for correctness. And by a community. So this strength comes together with eBrains and provides support to all these interesting workflows that combine many things together. And um, now I go um, to this layer below that says Phoenix Research Infrastructure, um, because everything uh, or most of the services, of course, run on top of, um, of computing infrastructure that, that is um, then available to researchers. And before going to details on the, um, on the hardware, I would like to mention that, um, of course, it is not only the single scale that is uh, very important. We also saw that the transferring data from one scale to another is uh, an, an important point supported by eBrains. But then here, there is also a specific effort within eBrains to provide a framework for co-simulation in which um, you can have simulations on, for example, Nest uh, communicating with simulations with uh, Neuron or Arbor, communicating with simulations on the virtual brain and exchanging information in order to, um, to make questions even more uh, more more um, relevant for your own uh, for your own area of research, and um, an ex a typical example here is uh, so to say you have a whole brain simulation using the virtual brain, but then you are very focused or you want to know more about specific regions, so you replace a specific region of the brain with Nest. And then you maybe want to have within this nest simulation some more details on some specific types of connectivity or some specific data that's being produced underneath at, at the subcellular scale, for example. So these type of simulations will become available at the end of SGA3 uh, with the multi-scale co-simulation infrastructure of brains. And um, here's a, another view of what I just mentioned. So going from the data, of course, to then these multi-scale simulation tools, um, interacting with embodied AI in the neurobotics platform, but also with future applications, for example, brain-machine interfaces, live animal experiments, and having the support of the live visualization and the steering tools that are provided through the general backend of eBrains. This, of course, uh, in the future of uh, multi-scale simulation. And um, this is, of course, a complicated endeavor. So there is a very strong engineering effort uh, behind the generation of this co-simulation framework, um, which um, is still in development. So. As, as promised, um, so I, I am finished with the scale, uh, with the whole range of scales of simulation. But uh, before uh, I, I leave you with uh, Michele, I wanted to first just mention the different other uh, components that are available in eBrains and that can be connected to simulation. And the first natural step is, of course, visualization with, with tools like Be Simple, NeuroScheme, NeuroDeshMesh which um, allow you to observe uh, your models, observe the results of your simulation and interact with the connectivity, with the setup, with 
um, all the different aspects of your model. We also have analysis tools like Elephant, uh, which allow you to observe statistics on, on the spiking behavior of neurons, on, on the different um, yeah, elements that conform your experimental or your simulated data, or even compare between each other. And then we have, of course, also Pine, which again comes as a helper on top of all the tools uh, that allow you to generate a standardized um, version of your models, which can then be ported between different simulators or used between them um, without having to, uh, again, rewrite all your scripts uh, in order to make use of one or the other tool. As mentioned already by Jan, and there we, we also have the Neurobotics platform to which you can connect, for example, Nest or TBB uh, models and uh, send exchange data between uh, a virtual robot uh, in an environment and, and a virtualized brain that uh, learns or that um, uh, processes input from the environment and produces the desired output. Um, neuromorphic hardware, uh, both brain skills and Spinnaker are the platforms uh, that where you can port your models for in, and where you can also uh, produce data that you can then compare to simulations or which you can use to go beyond to questions related for example, to artificial intelligence and machine learning, doing a specific tasks or aiming to even uh, create uh, innovative uh, new technologies um, that make use of the neuroscience that you have explored with different simulation tools and then are ported to this low energy um, usage uh, hardware that can be then translated into uh, innovative products. As I said before, all the simulation tools um, of course need to be executed in a hardware and um, eBrains uh, provides access to high performance computing infrastructure through uh, the IC project uh, on the Phoenix research infrastructure and um, you as users of the eBrains infrastructure can request access to this hardware and specifically for example for education purposes you can set up and request test accounts or training accounts on the hardware and you can then um, link uh, IPython notebooks or scripts uh, during your teaching sessions uh, to, to this hardware so that users can also learn how to leverage the, the, the computational power provided by this infrastructure. And um, again, I have here uh, an important part of the simulation infrastructure for you um, as, as high level users who will also share this with, your, with other communities. It is very important uh, for us if you um, let us know about your needs, about your questions, about your the, any issues that you may find through the high level support team. Um, and this allows us not only to make our tools better and uh, support your use cases, uh, but it also uh, welcomes you into the community and we can then very easily direct you to the groups that are have their hands on the tools and that can help you even set up, for example, uh, a training session for a specific tool or um, to create uh, a small use case for, uh, for your uh, teaching class, for example, and um, all these through the HLST um, so that uh, all the uh, different developers are, are in touch with each other and are online with what, what you need uh, for, for your uh, specific training needs. So that takes me to the end of this quick overview of all the different tools. And now I would leave the floor to Michele. So uh, as you already seen by the previous presentation, especially from, from Jan, um, this is a research infrastructure. And uh, Sandra 
uh, also as I explain you, um, and I guess that you already uh, figure it out, that uh, it is not only a website. Behind the website, there is uh, a lot of uh, sophisticated technology. And uh, uh, because we believe that the best way to disseminate neuroscience is to implement an infrastructure that allows you to do as much as possible without anything uh, uh, that uh, are, you are currently probably forced to do. For example, downloading spatial software with all the dependencies, download and install Python in your computer or some other languages, the, the simulators and things like that. Um, you will see in the next session with an and so on that uh, most of the tools that Sandra and, uh, and Jan have shown um, previously could be run from your web browser without any much of uh, um, the need of having uh, coding skills or a deep understanding of the simulation process, the modeling and simulation processing. Of course, you need to know what you are doing. If you want to implement a model, you need to know in principle what the model is, what can give you, and it, it, the, according to the level of the simulation that you are uh, would like to uh, implement, you need to know what a spiking neuron is, what an ion channel is, what a synaptic transmission means, synaptic plasticity, and things like that. But this is a given, of course. But uh, the tools and the uh, simulation engines and the simulation code, it is our part. So let's start seeing the services and then simulation. So we have been trying to um, be as much as consistent throughout the, the tools that you are going to, to use and see. But of course, because the different levels at the different simulation engines have different communities, a different structure, different requirements, uh, once you enter a real um, um, cellular level modeling, spiking neurons, whole brain, you will be brought to another world because each community has its own requirement and uh, language, okay? So, but as, as, as much as possible, we have been trying to uh, use the same kind of uh, initial interface for all the simulation levels. So for example, uh, Arbor, Elephant, Interactive Workflow, Nest, Next Desktop, Next ML. Whenever you click on any of these boxes, oh, thanks God, my uh, battery backup system must stop it making a, a background noise. Whenever you go into a, 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 a one of these boxes, you will be uh, into a, the same look-like interface in which you can see what is the offer for this tool, uh, a, a brief explanation, and then you can finally click to go to the actual tool. So now, uh, not all tools are at the same level of uh, implementation of they offer the same um, characteristics. There are a few tools that you will find, they still require, unfortunately, some download, but eventually, uh, we, uh, the, the idea is to develop a set of use cases where it could, can you actually do something on the web, on, on the site. But in some cases, you have to download something. In other cases, um, you will be brought to uh, run web applications. So it is just a very simple point and click for low level users. In other cases, um, you need to know uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So in the next session, after my talk here in, 20, in about um, half an hour or so, um, you will be doing actually actual runs on uh, um, the, the simulation tools that use Neuron and Arbor. And uh, uh, I believe that tomorrow is going to be the virtual brain and uh, Nest uh, uh, tools. 
Of course, there was no time to do through in details and so on session of everything, okay? So um, let me talk a little bit about uh, uh, the interactive workflows for the cellular level modeling that you are going to see uh, next. Uh, these are a tools that, a set of tools that are specifically implemented in neuron and uh, uh, are devoted to do simulations and implement models which deals with the detailed neuron model, which means actual neurons, uh, 3D reconstructions, of course, implemented, models implemented you based on uh, experimental data, experimental traces, uh, and uh, models uh, of uh, ion channels, current, and synaptic transmission that are taken from the literature or from other models. And uh, network, networks built using individual neurons. J just to give you an idea of the top level um, model that uh, we have uh, and that you can actually run sim simplified simulation later on the, on the, on the platform is the, the hippocampus model. I, I, sh I show you a very simple movie of the current version of the, of the model. This is the hippocampus, the C1 region of the of a rat. We, it, it has about 450,000 neurons. 50,000 um, of them are interneurons. You see this as, as biking uh, neurons and activity, spontaneous activity going on. Uh, this is, of course, a slice. And of course, at this point, with this level of simulation, we have full control uh, of the experiment. As a matter of fact, we can do what we call in silico experiment, and you are going to do some of them in the next session for, for the preliminary version of this model that is on the network already. The full model is uh, currently um, under embargo because we are writing the paper, but there is a version of it that can, uh, you can run later as an end on um, process. Uh, so uh, since you are trainers, once you get to the, um, to the workflow, the very first thing that you should uh, be familiar with before going on and do the classes for your community is to uh, read the guidebook. Please, before going on after the hands-on session, before you start with your, your uh, class, please read the guidebook because it is a place, very detailed explanation of uh, of each use case that you can use. There is a guidebook for every tool. I, I'm showing just the one for the, for the cellular level simulation because I'm most, more familiar with it, but each section has its own guidebook. And uh, you, you have to go through this because otherwise it is not always just point and click. You need to know how to uh, format the data, how to go through the uh, workflows. Uh, so, for example, each use case, you are going to see that each use case has some kind of little icons close to it, which will give you an idea of how difficult will be for the different users that specific use case. So, for example, everybody means that these are web applications, very easy to go, to go through uh, point and click, so it is, they, are, they don't require almost anything. Power users, of course, these are users that know exactly what they are doing and have some coding ability. You need to have some coding ability to run those use cases. Expertise is a higher level of, uh, of expertise because uh, experts basically are people and modelers that are able to build their own use case, okay? But also there are use cases which are relatively simple and so they can uh, run on the server that we provide on eBrains. Other um, use cases require larger computing resources, and then you need to have access to a supercomputer system. So even if you need to have access to supercomputer systems, there are 
jobs, for example, a very simple optimization or just a demo, or when you want to do, for example, for the hippocampus, a slice, so we, you have just a, a few thousand neurons, uh, you don't need much computer time, but you need some supercomputer time. So for this reason, we have also implemented what we call service account. Uh, we give the user free a few thousand computer hours on a supercomputer system in such a way that the users or the students can run some exercise using some free uh, account without having to go through the usually kind of uh, convolved, convoluted process to get an account, an official a personal account on a supercomputer system. Or there are also uh, ways in which you can say, look, I have already have my account on a supercomputer system. Can I use, for example, you have a, a, a praise award winner, and so yeah, you have millions of computer time on one of the supercomputers that we have attached with the Human Brain Project and the Phoenix, then you can use your own system, your own account to run the use cases running large scale supercomputer, so large, scale, large scale models. In some cases, there are also video tutorials uh, unfortunately, the, the current version of the interactive video tutorials are um, based on the uh, previous implementation on the collaboratory one of the use cases. But they are, um, you will figure out that they are very useful because they are really interactive. You need to choose which way to go in exploring um, uh, a specific, uh, a specific uh, tool. Uh, let me go back to the cellular level. Uh, so, it is just very simple. You have here trace analysis, single cell modeling, morphology, in silico experiment. And for each of them, you will be presented, and you will see, of course, in more details later, you will be presented with choices, which are specifically implemented and shown to make your life easier from every point of view. Um, I just want to give you a more practical example of uh, what, what we call um, facility apps. The eBrains facility apps are um, special web websites that allows you to do um, specific sets of uh, modeling, exploration, data exploration, and things that you cannot do inside the platform. However, they are very tightly connected with the platform and, uh, and uh, they give you the possibility to do much more complex things than what you can do with the, with the eBrains. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to show you, these are not yet online. I mean, the site is online. For example, in our case, it's the Hippocampus Hub. The site is online but it will be officially released at the end of the next month. And uh, what we are implementing here, and there are other apps uh, for simulation, there is the Cerebellum hub and also the Basal Ganglia hub, uh, in, uh, that um, are the, the, hippocampus hub, the hippocampus hub is jointly uh, developed and maintained by CNR and uh, by, by EPFL. The uh, Cerebellum hub is uh, from uh, University of Pavia and uh, the KTH is for the basal ganglia. Um, so here, for example, you want to be the model. The idea here is that uh, you have uh, a shopping chart, chart, chart okay? So you, the, the idea is that you can pick the elements of the model that you want to build from different sites around the world, from different repository, including, of course, the knowledge graph of the eBrains that uh, Jan has shown you before and put everything together before going into uh, a modeling uh, part. So I, I just briefly go through this, that, that should show how it works. For example, morphologies. This is, of course, is dedicated to the hippocampus. So here we have a set of morphologies from different sources, neuromorpho typically, but also there is also internal sources. We have in the knowledge graph some uh, data, that, that some morphologies. And so once you are, you are ready, you can explore each of them. Once you are ready, say, okay, yes, I want to use this morphology, for example. 
then you can set it and send it to the Ojukin Axley Neuro Builder. You will see, uh, you will run this, uh, not this version, but uh, the standalone version of the um, Ojukin Axley Neuro Builder later in this, in the, today. Uh, you get select the morphology and then I go on and say, okay, now I want to select some models, some mod files for those of you who are familiar with neuro. So the, the one with the kinetics, I can go again through the available data around, in this case, model DB, but there are also other sites that, that, that we are um, collecting data from and say, okay, I want to use these models. And I say, okay, there you go. And then at this point say, okay, now I want to do this, my model. And then you will brought the server error probably. This, of course, this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the kind of problems that you get into when you are doing things online. But usually this works and you will be brought to the section in which you, allow, you are allowed to, to begin to build uh, your own models. Um, now, of course, uh, in, in the next session, you are going to see also the simulation of the, the entire hippocampus. Probably you are going through uh, the in silico experiment uh, for, for a small circuit where you are, you are going to select a few cells and do experiments like in the, in the lab, deciding where to put the electrode, the, the, the stimulation electrode, where to put the recording electrodes, and look at the traces, decide the, the synaptic activation patterns and things like that. But also using the, uh, probably the, 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 the service account to run a small simulation of, the, of a slice of the hippocampus. And also uh, you will learn uh, how to do simulation using Jupyter notebooks. And uh, because maybe something that has been missed from uh, this uh, presentation today is the, uh, the uh, illustration of how your workspace function on eBrains. Um, for those of you who are experimentalists or you work with experimentalists, uh, you know, at least I know, because I've been working with experimentalists for 30 years now, uh, I know how jealous experimentalists are of their data. But be sure that here, even if you can upload your own data, your own traces to be analyzed that eventually use it to do a model, we will never uh, look and get your data to do something else. You are uh, completely free to uh, block and uh, the, 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 the sharing of your data until you are satisfied and you are going to work on your own um, environment on the platform. So at this point, I, I have four minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, otherwise, I think we can close here the session. <laughs>